ladies and gentlemen, daylight savings time. What is it? How is it? And how come in the K Cone in the US we do it and overseas it's different? I don't know, but we're here for educational purposes only and we're going to figure it out. Every year, some countries move their clocks forward in the spring only to move them back in the autumn. To the vast majority of the world who doesn't participate in this odd clock fiddling, clock fiddling countries that switch their clocks countries that don't bother this is it this is the million dollar uh the image k kona south k kona europe does australia does i wonder what determines whether or not you you hit the button or not like you you rewind it back it seems a baffling thing to do so what's the reason behind it the original idea proposed by george hudson was to give people more sunlight in the summer of course, it's important to note that changing a clock doesn't actually make more sunlight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wait, wait. It was changed to give more sunlight. It kind of makes sense until what he said said that you don't make more sunlight. You're just sliding the window of sunlight. That's not how physics works. But by moving the clocks forward an hour, compared to all other human activity, the sun will seem to both rise and set later. It will seem to rise and set later, but it's not actually setting. That's that's understood. Unless you're in solstice. All right, let's just keep moving. The time when the clocks are moved forward is called daylight saving time, and the rest of the year is called standard time. This switch... Wait, there's standard time? Daylight savings time I thought was just a day. A day in which you just roll the clocks back roll forward fall backwards effectively gives people more time to enjoy the sunshine and nice summer weather after work hudson in particular wanted more sunlight so he could spend more time adding to his insect collection <laughs> i'll tell you what like for one person to be able to change time just to do, do bug life i mean sounds like he's a hollow knight fan when winter is coming the clocks move back presumably because people don't want to go outside anymore but winter doesn't have this effect on everyone if you live in a tropical place like Hawaii, you really don't have to worry about seasons because they pretty much don't happen. Okay, so you set the clocks back because you don't want to go outside? Every day all year is sunny and beautiful, so Christmas is just as good of a day to hit the beach as any other. And so, Hawaii is one of two states in the Union that ignore daylight saving time. So they just ignore, so they're like, alright, hey, look. We're operating in these confines, right? The confines of operation. But we're just like, hey. Everyone else doing it, we're just going to do our own thing. But then how do they know what time is time, is the real question. But the further you travel from the equator in either direction, the more the seasons assert themselves, and you get colder and darker winters. Make I mean, look. Look, 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 look. You need some DAE-level degrees to figure this out. Summertime much more valuable to the locals. So it's no surprise that the further a country is from the equator, the more likely it uses daylight saving time. The further a country is from the equator is more likely to use DST. Reason being, if you're on the red line, warm. Further, it's kind of like, you know, you, you play a game, hot or cold. The further from the line you are, the colder you get, so it affects your time. Just trying to wrap this whole thing, just trying to just first grade it here. Red line, hot, far away from red, cold. Further away from red, DST, close to the line, no DST. We're making a little progress, explaining daylight savings time. Little progress. Hudson proposed his idea in Wellington in 1895, but it wasn't well received, and it took until 1916 for Germany Where's Wellington? to be the first country to put it into practice. Though the uber-industrious Germans were less concerned with catching butterflies on a fine summer evening than they were with saving coal to feed the war machine. The Germans thought daylight saving time would conserve energy. The reasoning goes that it encourages people to stay out later in the summer and thus use less artificial lighting. This sounds logical, and it may have worked in the more regimented society of a hundred years ago, but does it still work in the modern world? That's a good question, because those laptops run 24-7. Hey, it's Dan. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button. It helps out a ton. Thank you. That turns out to be a surprisingly difficult question to answer. For example, take mankind's greatest invention. Twitch.tv. You go to Twitch.tv, it never shuts off. Air conditioning. The magic box of cool that makes otherwise uninhabitable <laughs> sections of the world quite tolerable places to live. Okay, air conditioning. But heat out of your house isn't cheap, and turning on one air conditioner is the same. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? What is this wizardry? So air conditioning pumps heat out of your house? I thought it just 
makes the air cold. Air conditioning makes, it puts cold in the air. This isn't cheap, and turning on one air conditioner is the same as running dozens of tungsten light bulbs. Fan moves, moves air. If people get more sunshine, but they don't use it to go outside, then daylight saving time might actually cost electricity, not save it. This is particularly true in a place like Phoenix, where the average summer high is 107 degrees and the record is 120. 107? Holy bush. How come the windows aren't sweating? Two. If you suggest to an Arizonan to change their clocks in the summer to get more sunshine, they laugh in your face. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We need, we need a more 118 degrees right at, at noonish, please? Okay, so it's starting, all, it's starting to all wrap up pretty good. Sun and higher electricity bills are not what they want, which is why Arizona is the second state that never changes their clocks. Where's the first state? Hawaii is one of two states in the union that ignore daylight saving time. Where's the, the first state? The state of first? Hawaii. Okay, then how come like Southern California doesn't DST? Another problem with trying to study daylight saving time is rapid changes in technology and electrical use. As technology gets better and better and better. Okay, Atari, Super Nintendo, Virtual Fighter. More electricity is dedicated to things that aren't light bulbs, and the lore of a hot, sweaty, mosquito-filled day outside is less appealing than technological entertainment and climate-controlled comfort inside. Can we get true? Can we get some truing? True, very extremely true. Who wants mosquitoes when you can have Minecraft and Pepe hands? Also, the horrifically energy-inefficient tungsten light bulbs that have remained unchanged for a century are giving way to CFLs and LEDs. What do you mean? Yeah, there are LEDs everywhere reducing the amount of energy required to light a room okay so even assuming that daylight saving time is effective it's probably less effective with every passing year the bottom line is while some studies say daylight saving time costs more electricity and others say it saves electricity the one thing they agree on is the effect size not how about like how about that doesn't matter how about what matters is trying to figure out what time it is so that when you say a time, it's the same time for everyone. 20% or 10%, but 1% or less, which in the United States works out to be about $4 per household. $4 saved or spent on electricity over an entire year is not really a huge deal either. What do you mean, 48 bucks? That gets, that gets, you, that gets you a good meal out. You know, you're talking three squares what? with that. So the question now becomes, is the hassle of switching clocks twice a year worth it? The most obvious trouble comes from sleep deprivation. And I'll say this, like, Obvious trouble comes from sleep deprivation. The hassle of moving a clock. Like, we don't even have to do that. Like, back in the day, you had to do that. Now you just, you just look at your phone and it does it for you. Sometimes you ever just, like, wait on those days and you're like, when is the clock going to change? Does it change at midnight and rolls back to 11? Or does it, you got to wait till 1 and it rolls to 1? Either way, it, it's magic. Deprivation. An already too common affliction in the Western world that daylight saving time makes measurably worse. With time tracking software, we can actually see that people are less productive the week after the clock changes. Rescue time. Is this something that saves time? Estimate 480 million in loss productivity for knowledge workers. What the heck's a knowledge worker? This comes with huge associated costs. To make things worse, most countries take away that hour of sleep on a Monday morning. Sleep deprivation can lead to heart attacks and suicides, and the daylight saving time Monday has a higher than normal spike. Oh, saving time Monday has a What's that? What is that metal implant right there? Is that future? Higher than normal spike in both. Other troubles come from scheduling meetings across time zones. Let's say you're trying to plan a three-way conference between New York, London, and Sydney. Let's say you're trying to plan a Twitch show between Kay Kona, Brett's house, and Zane the Editor's New Zealand. An easy thing to do under the best of circumstances, but made extra difficult when they don't agree on when daylight saving time should start and end. In Tell me about Sydney it. Is 11 hours ahead of London and New York is five hours behind. But then New York is the first to enter daylight saving time and moves its clock forward an hour. Two weeks later, London does the same. In one more week, Sydney, being on the opposite side of the world, leaves daylight saving time and moves its clock back an hour. Are you kidding me? Okay. So let's just, let's just take this all in. Right now, here's where we are in K. Conaville. Okay. So we change. So us and, and we change... UK does not change, okay? So we get an hour closer to the UK until 13 days later, then they get a day further, but we're extra, extra close to, S no, we're not. We're far away from Sydney, but we're actually one closer. Then Sydney gets one closer to us, so it's kind of like a sandwich. 
So in the space of three weeks, New York is five hours behind London, then four hours, then five again. And Sydney is either 11, 10, or That's nine good hours graphic. London, That's good graphics. 15, 15, or 14 hours from New York. <laughs> and this whole crazy thing happens again in reverse six months later. Back in the Dark Ages, this might not have mattered so much, but in the modern interconnected world, planning international meetings happens thousands and thousands of oh, times. Oh, look, 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 look. I, look, I am not the spaghetti master, but this is sickening. Like, there, there was no kind of effort put in this white, like... No app, zero. You know what? They're using VHS cords anyways. Thing in inconsistent time zones isn't doing netizens any favors. Let's and countries go. aren't even consistent about daylight saving time within their own borders. Brazil has daylight saving time, but only if you live in the south. Canada has it too, but not Saskatchewan. Most of But like... <laughs> but like... But not Saskatchewan. How does, how does this work? You just opt out? You hit the button, say we're not participating? I don't understand. Like, is there, is there like a chessboard? And you're either on the chessboard or you're not? One. Most of Oz does daylight saving time, but not Western Australia, the North. What's Ozda? Queensland. And of course, the United States does have daylight saving time, unless you live in Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, or as mentioned before, Hawaii and Arizona. <laughs> But Arizona isn't even consistent within itself. While Arizona ignores daylight saving time, the Navajo Nation inside of Arizona follows it. Inside of the Navajo Nation is the Hopi Reservation, which, like Arizona, ignores daylight saving time. Going deeper, inside of the Hopi Reservation is another part of the Navajo Nation. No, we're going deep. We're going four levels time. deep. And finally, there's also a part of the Hopi Reservation elsewhere in the Navajo Nation, which doesn't. <laughs> So, driving across this 100-mile stretch would technically necessitate seven clock changes, which is insane. <laughs> While this is an unusual local oddity, here's a map showing the different daylight saving and time zone rules in all their complicated glory. Looks it's like a Google. Huge mess and constantly needs updating as countries change their laws. Wait, 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 wait. Shouldn't be surprising. Oh, well, why is Michigan? Why is Michigan gold? Like, so this is time zones. Gold, gold, that makes no... I, dude, we're just taking it all in. Which is why it shouldn't be surprising that even our digital gadgets can't keep the time straight occasionally. Well, maybe because you're using an iPhone from 12 years ago. And geocaching. So to review, daylight saving time gives more sunlight in the summer after work, which, depending on where you live, might be an advantage or not. And it may or may not save electricity. But one thing is sure, it's guaranteed to make something that should be simple, keeping track of time, quite complicated. Which is why, when it comes time to change the clocks, there's always a debate about whether or not we should. Chat, what do you think? Chat, you guys make the end call here. Why in chat, if you think we should change clocks? And in chat, if no. All right, let's call the vote here. 88% say no. What if there was just like one clock in Minecraft and that was everything? So we look at the time and then we're like, okay, hey, it's, 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 it's bluestone o'clock. It's diamond o'clock. It's redstone o'clock. You know what I mean? Then it, look, there's daylight savings time explained in the most simple way possible or confusing. Want to catch up on the Dan Geesling show because you can't catch it live on Twitch? Then go to youtube.com slash Dan Geesling plays. There you'll find every single one of our live shows cut up in an easily digestible episode for your viewing pleasure. Episodes are up within a couple days of the show, so you're never too far behind if you want to catch up and watch live. That's youtube.com slash Plays to watch anything you might have missed on Twitch.